Welcome back everyone, Houston Math Prep here. We're going to talk to you about the most basic type of differential equation that you can solve, a first order equation called a directly integrable equation. This is something that you're definitely capable of just coming from a background of having some calculus. When a derivative can be written as a function of the independent variable only, so in other words, I can write y prime as just some expression involving x, y double prime involving just some expression of x, any derivative of y, any order, equal to just some expression involving x, then we call that a directly integrable equation. And we'll just basically use integration or antiderivatives to find the solutions for our differential equations when that's the case. Let's look at an easy first example here. We want to find the general solution for our directly integrable equation dy dx equals 6x squared plus 4. So you notice I have the derivative of y on one side, and I have an expression involving only x on the other side. So this is directly integrable. And so what we'll say is if dy dx equals 6x squared plus 4, then that means y is going to equal the antiderivative of 6x squared plus 4 dx. Right, so we're just taking the antiderivative of our expression for x with respect to x. So these are just going to be power rules. The antiderivative of 6x squared, so the power for x would go up by 1 to x cubed, divide by the new power would be divide by 3. 6 divided by 3 would reduce to 2, so we'll get 2x cubed for the first term. The antiderivative of 4 is going to be 4x. And then we also want to remember our constant of integration. Now, we might end up with more than one of these constants when we're working these, so I'm going to go ahead and just call my constant c1. You might just call it c if you know you're only going to have one constant in the solution process of your differential equation. So the answer for this one is simply y equals 2x cubed plus 4x plus some constant. Let's look at another first order equation. We can see that it's first order because we have y prime. Now we want to find the particular solution and notice we're given a condition as well. So we have x squared times y prime equals negative one and we want to find the particular solution when y of one equals three. So let's find our general solution first. Now you'll notice this is not written as y prime equals some function of x. So what we'll need to do first is get the y prime by itself. If we divide both sides by x squared, then of course we'll get y prime is equal to negative one over x squared. Now this is written in a directly integrable form, and so if y prime is equal to negative one over x squared, then we know that y is going to equal the integral of negative one over x squared dx. Now you can think of this as a power rule if you want. You can think of this as negative x to the minus two, if that helps you in your integration. So we will increase the power by one and divide by the new power. So that will give us x to the minus one. And when we divide by negative one, that will get rid of the negative out front, right? So we get x to the minus one, also known as one over x. We'll go ahead and say plus some constant, plus c1 here. And now this is our general solution, and we want to use our condition to find our particular solution. So we are going to use this condition. This condition says when x is equal to 1, then y is equal to 3. And so we'll use that information to solve for c. Plugging in y equals 3, and plugging in x equals 1, we'll get 3 equals 1 over 1 would just be 1 plus my constant here. And if I subtract one from both sides, then I will get that my constant is equal to two in this case. If I now take my value for my constant and put it back into my general solution, then I will get my particular solution is going to be y equals one over x plus two. Let's take a look at another example here, a second order directly integrable equation. We can see it's directly integrable because I have the derivative here equals just some function of x on the other side. We want to find the general solution this time. So if the second derivative is equal to x e to the x, then that means I know that y prime is equal to the antiderivative of that, right? So we can integrate x e to the x dx. 
And now how would we integrate x e to the x dx? We would do that by parts. So we'll go ahead and choose our u to be x, and we'll go ahead and choose our dv to be e to the x dx. And if we do that, then we would need du. So if u is x, then du is 1 dx. And if dv is e to the x dx, then v is just e to the x. And now remember our formula for integration by parts. That starts with uv, so u times v is x e to the x, minus integral v du. So minus integral v du is e to the x dx here. Now we have this extra little bit of antiderivative to do here, so we'll say y prime is equal to x e to the x minus the antiderivative of e to the x is just e to the x by itself, plus some constant when we get finished with all of this, right? So I'll call it c1. And this is our first derivative, so now we're to y prime. We're still not solved because we want the answer to be y equals, right? So we need to then figure out y from here. So to get from y prime to y, we'll need to integrate again, all right? So y will equal the antiderivative of x e to the x minus e to the x plus my constant that I already have, dx. All right, let's go ahead and move over here. Now when we integrate this, the first term we're going to need to integrate is x e to the x. And we already integrated x e to the x when we found our y prime, right, at the very beginning. And we got this as an answer when we found the antiderivative of x e to the x. So I'm just going to copy this down again. So the antiderivative of this first term is going to be x e to the x minus e to the x plus, but now I want to be careful, I already have c1, so if I'm going to write a constant in what I'm getting here, I would need to call it c2. So that's going to be our second constant we got. So that is the antiderivative of this, just using the work that we already did earlier. Now let's move on to the next term. Then we have the integral of negative e to the x, that's going to be minus e to the x. Nothing to change there. And then what's the antiderivative of c1? Remember c1 is a constant, and so the antiderivative of a constant would be that thing times x. So we'll get c1 times x. Okay, so now if we look for some terms to combine here, you might see we have a negative e to the x and another negative e to the x there. So we'll go ahead and call this x e to the x minus two e to the x's. And then I'll write my x term first, so I'll say plus c1 times x plus that second constant that I got when I integrated the second time, c2. So there's our solution for the differential equation, y double prime equals x e to the x. Let's find one more particular solution, this time a second order directly integrable equation. We have d squared y over dt squared, so second derivative of y with respect to t equal to cosine of t, and we have two conditions. We'll need to solve for two constants if we're going back and we're integrating twice. So let's go ahead and go from our second derivative to our first derivative. So let's we'll say the first derivative, dy dt, that's just going to be the antiderivative of cosine t. Now it's a function of t, so we should be integrating dt, right? So here we'll get dy dt is equal to the antiderivative of cosine t, which is sine of t, plus some constant, I'll call it c1. Now this is a general first derivative, so if I want the specific first derivative, I'm going to need to plug in the condition that gives me information about my first derivative. This says y prime of zero equals zero. This one's about the function y. We don't have y, we have the derivative, right? We have y prime here. So we want to use this condition at this step. So we're going to use this y prime of zero equals zero. That says when t is equal to zero, when I plug in t, y prime should be zero, right, is what that says. So if I do that, y prime over here is going to be zero, equal to sine of t becomes sine of zero plus c1. 
Now, sine of zero is zero, so I get zero equals zero plus C1. So that tells us actually that C1 is zero, and that happens sometimes, right? That's totally fine. So taking that information and putting it back in this general first derivative is going to give us the particular first derivative we need to move forward. So we have dy dt equals sine of t, and then my C1 was zero, so we won't write plus zero, we'll just write sine of t. Now we're almost there, we just need y. So we go ahead and from dy dt, go ahead and integrate again. So we'll say then y is going to equal the antiderivative of sine of t dt. So that will give us that y of t is equal to the antiderivative, which is negative cosine of t plus c. Now I already used a c1, so I'll just technically call this a c2, even though my c1 went away, so I don't get confused if I look back at this. And now I have a general solution for the differential equation, but I need the particular solution. And since this is y equals, I now use my condition that involves y. And so this says right here that when t equals zero, y will equal one. So we're going to use that condition and solve C2 here. So if I plug in one for y equals negative cosine of zero plus C2. So we plugged in zero for t. Cosine of zero is one. So this would be negative one, all right? So we have one equals negative one plus C2. Now if we add one to both sides, that's gonna tell us that C2 is equal to two and plug that into my general solution, and that will give me the particular solution, right? So I would have y equals uh, negative cosine t plus two. I'm gonna go ahead and turn it around. I like my positive in the front. You can write it however you want, though. y equals two minus cosine t is our particular solution for this equation given these conditions. Okay, everyone, that's directly integrable equations, very accessible, just coming from calculus. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next video.